There are plenty of celebrity conspiracy theories out there. Ever heard that Paul McCartney died in the 60s and was replaced by a lookalike? Or that Beyonce faked her pregnancy? Well, those conspiracies are just fun and games compared to the very real celebrity mysteries coming up. I dare you to explain what happened to these 10 celebrities who mysteriously vanished and are still missing today. Amazing. Number 10. Jim Gray. Jim was a pretty well-known computer scientist who had a good life going for him. He worked for some big time companies, including IBM and Microsoft. In 2007, after his mother passed away, Jim set out on his 40 foot yacht to scatter her ashes in the ocean near the Farallon Islands, just off the coast of San Francisco. He was never seen again. I know what you're thinking. His boat probably sank and he drowned. But the details behind Jim Gray's disappearance simply don't add up. For one, he was a very experienced sailor and Jim's boat was a fancy one. It had a system that should have automatically sent out a distress call in the event of an accident. When he didn't return from his trip, the Coast Guard spent four days searching for him. An underwater search of the area found no sign of his sunken ship. Perhaps he is still sailing the Pacific or living off the land on an island somewhere, far away from the world of computer software development. Number nine, Oscar Zeta Acosta. Oscar Zeta Acosta was a writer and politician who was famous for his contributions to the Chicano movement in the 60s and early 70s. When he thought that something was unfair, he wasn't afraid to raise hell about it. Anyone read the book Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? Oscar was best friends with the author Hunter S. Thompson and the character Dr. Gonzo was written about him. Oscar called himself the Brown Buffalo because the buffalo is the animal everyone is out to get and it truly does seem like someone was out to get him. Oscar disappeared on a trip to Mexico in 1974. The last person to talk to him was his son. Oscar had called him to say that he was about to board a boat full of white snow. What could that possibly mean? Your guess is as good as mine. Oscar was known for being a fan of LSD. Maybe the white snow was a drug-induced hallucination, or maybe he was murdered. After all, there were plenty of people who may have been out to kill Los Angeles' brown buffalo. However, there are some people who believe he is still alive and living in Mexico or Miami. He would be in his 80s now, so if you ever hear an old man call himself a buffalo, you may be able to solve this mystery. Number eight, Richie Edwards. Edwards was a handsome songwriter and musician of the alternative rock band Manic Street Preachers with a talent for publicity stunts. One time when a journalist implied his band's posturing was insincere, Edwards responded by grabbing a razor blade and carving for real onto his own arm. So it didn't seem that crazy when he disappeared in 1995. He was totally the kind of dude to fake his own death. A few weeks before his disappearance, Edwards left a mental institution and began withdrawing money from his bank account. By the day he disappeared, he'd withdrawn over $3,000. Sounds like he was preparing for something big, doesn't it? It gets even weirder though. Right before he disappeared, he gave a friend a book and told her to read the introduction. The introduction was about someone who stayed in a mental institution and then vanished for good. So maybe not so surprisingly, Edwards was never seen again. However, he's been spotted in quite a few places over the years. A passport office, a bus station in India, and in the Canary Islands. I like to think Edwards is still making music. He's probably rocking out on an island, pleased with himself for successfully faking his own death. Number seven, Jim Sullivan. Sullivan was an American singer and guitarist who grew up in California. He was the classic tall high school quarterback who could play guitar. After he got married, he formed a band with his sister-in-law, Kathy Durant, which they called The Survivors. Sort of an ironic name, huh? Jim had a difficult time making it big with his music. He released a couple of albums, the first of which was titled Alien Abduction, a coincidental name given his later disappearance. He ended up getting divorced in the early 70s and decided to move to Nashville, Tennessee for a fresh start in music. Unfortunately, Jim's drive to Nashville didn't go as planned. The last time he was seen, Jim abandoned his Volkswagen Beetle on a stranger's ranch in the middle of New Mexico and began walking away. Given his fascination with aliens, as indicated by his albums, UFO and Alien Abduction, and that he disappeared only a couple of hours from Roswell, a town known for UFOs and aliens, 
it's only natural to assume his disappearance was alien related. Number six, Bison Deli. Bison Deli was an American professional basketball player. He was pretty successful in the NBA and won a championship in 1997. He made it so big that he wound up dating Madonna for a short time, which really is the epitome of success, isn't it? Bison decided to retire at age 30, walking away from a contract worth nearly $37 million. After that, he became fascinated with sailing. He learned to sail and purchased a catamaran boat named Hakuna Matata so that he could sail the seven seas with his girlfriend, brother, and their friend. He was last seen on July 6, 2002, when he and his crew were sailing off into the ocean near Tahiti. No one from the boat was seen again until July 20th, when the boat arrived back in Tahiti. Bison's brother Miles was the only one on board. Miles was charged with murder, but passed away before going to prison. He never did say what happened on the boat that summer, so I guess we'll never know what happened to Bison Deli. Number five, Lord Lucan. Lord Lucan was a British aristocrat who was known for his wealth and expensive taste. In the early 1950s, he quit his job as a banker to pursue a career in gambling. He was particularly skilled at backgammon and bridge. Lord Lucan got married and had children, though he ended up losing a bitter custody battle to his wife, Veronica. Then, 1974, the children's nanny was found bludgeoned to death in Lucan's basement. Veronica had been attacked as well, and she claimed that Lord Lucan was her attacker. While police were beginning to investigate, Lucan took off to stay with his friend in East Sussex. Then, he left the house in the middle of the night and was never seen again. His car was later found in New Haven. It had bloodstains in it, as well as a piece of lead pipe that was similar to the one found in the basement. A forensic investigation proved that the blood was a mix of his ex-wife's blood and the nanny's blood. It's pretty clear that Lord Lucan fled the scene of the crime and spent the rest of his life hiding out. In fact, he may still be alive today. Number four, Michael Rockefeller. Much like Lord Lucan, Michael Rockefeller was born with significant wealth. He was a fourth generation Rockefeller, making him part of one of the richest families in New York. After Michael graduated from Harvard University, he took many trips to New Guinea, where he studied archaeology. In November 1961, he and an anthropologist found themselves in a sticky situation off the coast of New Guinea. Their 40-foot canoe flipped over, and they were a good three-mile swim from shore. They drifted for a while, hanging on to their overturned boat. By the time Michael decided to go for it and swim to shore, he was an estimated 12 miles away. Renee was rescued the next day, but Michael was never seen again. Sure, it's possible that he drowned, but it's also entirely possible that he was cannibalized. You see, headhunting and cannibalism were quite common by tribes in New Guinea at the time, and they may have even had a motive. A few years prior, a Dutchman had killed several village leaders right on the beach where Michael theoretically should have arrived after swimming to shore. Many people believe they got their revenge on poor Michael Rockefeller. Number three, Gene Spangler. Jean Spangler was an American model, dancer, and actress. She became famous in Hollywood in the 1940s, but unfortunately, her fame was cut quite short. She vanished not long after her acting debut. In 1949, Jean told her family that she was going to go meet up with her ex-husband, Dexter, to find out about a child support payment she'd never received. She was supposed to go to work after meeting up with him. She was beginning her career as an actress, and she was supposed to film a scene late that night but she never made it to work that evening. In fact, she was never seen again. We could easily blame the ex-husband for Jean's disappearance, but Dexter told police he hadn't seen Jean in months and his story checked out. So where had Jean really gone the night of October 7th, 1949? Well, two days after she vanished, Jean's purse was found in a park in Los Angeles, about five miles from her house. The straps of the purse were torn as if they'd been ripped from her arm. The only thing in the purse was a note that read, Kirk, can't wait any longer. Going to see Dr. Scott. It will work best this way while mother is away. Jean's friends told police that she was pregnant at the time of her disappearance. They believed that Kirk must have been the father of the baby and that Dr. Scott was going to perform an abortion. Since abortion was illegal at the time, Dr. Scott may have been a fake name, which would explain why police couldn't find any Dr. Scotts in the area. 
but that still does not explain why Jean was never seen again. Many people believe she was taken by Los Angeles gangsters in the park where her purse was found. In fact, Jean was known to have worked for gangsters during her time as a dancer. The police investigations never really led anywhere, so it seems that Jean Spangler's disappearance will remain a mystery for the rest of time. Number two, Harold Holt. Harold Holt was an Australian politician. He was two years into his term as Australia's 17th Prime Minister when he disappeared in December of 1967. Harold absolutely loved the ocean and he spent his free time on the coast, swimming and spearfishing. One day he swam further from shore than usual and never returned. Keep in mind that Harold was the Prime Minister of Australia. His disappearance was not taken lightly. Despite massive search efforts, he was never found. His disappearance was a huge national embarrassment for the country. Since Harold was known for his love of the water, many people find it unlikely that he drowned. This leads to some interesting theories about his disappearance. One of the most prominent is that he faked his own death because he no longer wanted to be prime minister. That goes along well with the theory that he was collected by a submarine and defected to Asia. Unfortunately, we'll never know what happened to Australia's leader but the story does give me hope that maybe a few modern world leaders will vanish into the ocean. Number one, Daniel Kubelbeck. Daniel Kubelbeck was a German pop singer and actor who gained fame on a television talent show, Deutschland sucht den Superstar. He came in third place in 2002 and in the following years was fairly successful in his music career. In fall 2018, Daniel was traveling by cruise ship from Canada to New York when he disappeared into the ocean. Eyewitnesses believe that Daniel purposefully jumped off his fifth floor balcony, but fans believe the story is more mysterious than that. After all, the Canadian armed forces should have been able to find the body. Even Daniel's ex-boyfriend believes that Daniel faked his own death in order to begin a new life as a woman. He told reporters that Daniel dreamed of running away and starting over, although he never imagined he would do it in such a mysterious way. Since the disappearance was so recent, there's still a good chance we'll find Daniel alive. Perhaps he's living his best life as a punk rock chick named Daniela. I guess we'll never know. So, what do you think about these cases? Can you provide any answers? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.